from MTN News, you're watching Montana This Morning. I'm Ed Christian Dio in Bozeman. Today, Gallatin County Commissioners learn the price tag of the Gallatin County Courts building. I'll have that final price tag and reaction coming up. And schools across the country dealing with a teacher shortage coming up here on Montana this morning. We'll take a look at why some of those teachers left those positions. Meantime, it is 629. Chet Lehman, Matt Elwell with you here. A few clouds in the sky over the Montana city. Um, a little moisture in places, a little breezy <laughs> yeah. in places. All in all, not a bad morning. And, and we need every single drop, no. uh, especially in the month of August. Typically, Absolutely. Dry, I'm going to talk more about where we stand for the okay. month here in... Uh, what is it, about 12 minutes or so? Okay. Uh, until then, let's talk temperatures. <laughs> right now, holding into the 50s for most of the area, 66 in Whitehall. Afternoon does hold the potential of some thunder showers. I don't feel like Futurecast is picking up on that early afternoon potential. I do expect to see a few showers trying to develop, but the uh, heavier rain, I think, is handling very well. Uh, with the latest uh, model runs coming out. So we do expect to see some heavier rain showers. We go into the afternoon and evening may linger into the mid to late part of the evening after the sun sets in many cases. We'll talk about our rain chances over the course of the next couple of days and the impacts that may have on where we stand for moisture. Of course, we'll talk about that out from the weather patio. All right, thank you, Matt. 630 now. The ground hasn't broken yet, but Gallatin County Commissioners say the new court's building already millions of dollars over budget. Dean's Edgar Cedillo explains how the county plans to move forward. Tuesday, Gallatin County Commissioners learned the price tag for the Gallatin County Courts building, which is expected to go under construction right behind me. The price tag is nearly $10 million more than what was asked for by voters this last November. We were not surprised, and actually today was good news that it didn't go up anymore from where we thought it might be going. County commissioners asked voters for a bond to pay $29 million for the court's building. Today, they learned that the maximum cost of the building would be $39.6 million. They say inflation added with labor and construction costs have led to the $10 million increase. And this is just what governments and uh, school districts and major projects across the country are facing. County commissioners plan to cover the $10 million with saved capital dollars, ARPA funds, and a $2 million bond. State law allows local governments to borrow up to $2 million um, without asking for voter approval. So that's just going to have to be part of our financing stack to make this all work. Parts of the new building had to be altered to bring costs down. But we eliminated the basement of the building um, and redesigned uh, some of the um, secure access issues. And they say the construction schedule remains the same. That we are completing construction by November or December of 2024. The county hopes to get the permitting process wrapped up with the city soon so that construction can begin on the site in September or October. In Bozeman, Edgar Cedillo, MTN News. All right, 632 now on Friday, the Montana State Prison Employee President asked for the public's help in pressuring leaders at the Montana Department of Corrections to improve working conditions at the prison. MTN senior political reporter Ashley Nurbevig has our story. Montana State Prison employees picketed outside the institution on Friday to call attention to the working conditions inside. Staff at the demonstration described the prison's upper management as hostile and unresponsive. And overall, the picketing employees said they felt dismissed and ignored by Montana Department of Corrections leadership. About a dozen or so employees picketed for three and a half hours. The group stood at the intersection of Conley Lake Road and Old Stage Road in Deer Lodge which is about a mile and a half east from the first checkpoint into the prison and two miles west of the Deer Lodge city center. So despite cars crowding Deer Lodge's streets from visitors attending the Tri-County Fair, the picketers often waved signs at an empty road. Montana State Prison Employee Union President Kathy Clark organized the demonstration. We wanted to do an informational picket um, so the public knows how dangerous and how hostile the work environment has been out here. Just understand that we, we need all the support we can get um, uh, and that we are doing our best to try to make this a safe place, not only for the public, but for out here too. The hostility of communications between leadership of the prison and some employees was exemplified at the end of July when Montana State Prison Correctional Officer Anthony Cotton asked the Powell County Sheriff's Office to investigate his superiors for alleged kidnapping after Cotton said a member of command staff kept him locked in a control cage for about 20 to 30 minutes after his shift ended. Cotton said this was an attempt to force him to stay for an additional shift. 
In an emailed statement to Lee Newspaper's State Bureau, Prison Warden Jim Salmonson said Cotton's superiors did not try to hold him for a second shift. They were just late to relieve him. Clark criticized the warden's statement. Had that been the case here, uh, we wouldn't be in the situation that we're in. We wouldn't be talking about anything um, if that was the case. He has been out here for 17 years and he's been a good officer and didn't deserve that kind of treatment. Inmate production officer Kevin Hart works in Montana Correctional Enterprises, which is the state-owned business run out of the prison. In his about two decades working at the prison, Hart said he's never seen staff this unhappy. Management and staff are not working together, he said. No one believes in what management is doing because management doesn't communicate, he said. In response to the demonstration, DOC Director Brian Gutkin said in an emailed statement that he makes regular visits to the prison and, quote, the vast majority of the staff I visit with are overwhelmingly positive and excited about the direction we are heading and appreciate the support and communication they receive from their leadership, unquote. In Deer Lodge, Ashley Nurbubig, MTN News. All right, 635 now, another school year is underway, but many classrooms across the country still lacking teachers. Politics, health, and concerns over your safety, just some of the reason educators are calling it quits. Newsy's Amber Strong shows us how we got here. School bells are beginning to ring again, but coast to coast teachers are leaving the industry in droves. Our educators are tired, they are stressed out, and their workloads have significantly increased. A Wall Street Journal analysis of data from the Bureau of Labor Statistics found that as of last November, resignations in education work, including teachers, grew faster than any other industry. The report also found 182,000 Americans quit their jobs in public education in February of just this year. That's compared to 138,000 a year prior. And districts are preparing for more vacancies heading into the new school year. When we look at 700 plus vacancies within our school districts instructionally, you know, we've got to be able to find a solution to win the talent war. According to the National Center for Education Statistics, 44% of public schools have teaching vacancies. The Department of Education confirms the exodus is a result of the pandemic. NCES Commissioner Peggy Carr says schools are forced to use more teachers and non-teaching staff outside of their intended duties to deal with shortages. A sentiment school district leaders Newsy spoke to say they had to work around. When we have classrooms that are unfilled, that means we have teachers guest teaching on their planning time, or we have principals uh, or in some cases central office administrators filling in in classrooms too. So again, the entire system feels that pressure. And the number of teacher absences was also up during the 2021-2022 school year. Federal data shows nearly three quarters of all public schools reported a spike in teachers calling out compared to prior years. It could be that, you know, if a colleague is out with COVID, sometimes schools have to combine classes. Other times, teachers may have to give up planning periods. The pandemic is the main reason Tara Roberts has left her job in special education. To walk away, even if it's for the right reasons and, and possibly, you know, admittedly, maybe selfish reasons, you know, for your own health, your own well-being, both physically and mental. You just, you know it's the right thing to do, but it's hard. Roberts says her decision was based on a lack of support from her administration and feeling like students' needs weren't being put first. When you just feel like what you're doing isn't valued and isn't respected and you're being degraded for it, even, even within your own profession, those who can get out, I think, are getting out. Educators say classroom conditions are one major factor behind the increase in departure. Then there's the pay. According to the National Education Association Labor Union, the average starting teacher salary for 2020 to 2021 was $41,770. NEA says that's a 4% decrease from the year prior when you factor in inflation. People will say all the time, oh, teachers don't go into this for the money. And while that may be true, they also don't go into it to live in poverty. Florida is one of the states with the lowest average salary overall for teacher pay, ranked 48th in the country according to the NEA. Florida Education Association President Andrew Spar says these numbers make it difficult for teachers to get raises. We know of, of cases throughout the state where teachers with 20, 
25 years of experience, even 15 years of experience, are making less today than they would have with that exact same experience 10 years ago. And the existing problem could get worse. NEA polling from March found that more than half of teachers plan to leave the profession earlier than planned. Teachers' union leaders say burnout, added political pressures, and recent tragedies are fueling educators' concerns. 90% of teachers are basically saying, you know, they're really thinking about what happened in Uvalde and what that means for them. It doesn't mean that they're going to leave. It doesn't mean that, that you know, that, that they're not going to stay. But the impact has been huge across the country. And as uncertainty looms over the coming school year, teachers wait, ready to teach and ready to learn in what could be a year full of lessons outside the classroom. Amber Strong, Newsy.